Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, February 8th, 2022, and I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Uh, futures currently are looking a little bit lower, um, maybe a little worse on the NASDAQ, it looks like. Uh, not horrible. Uh, currently, we have the Dow Jones futures up three points, S&P futures down about eight, and the NASDAQ futures down about 50, um, which is about uh, a little more than one third of 1%. Um, futures have been kind of steady overnight. They were down. Uh, actually, they were up a little bit yesterday after hours and overnight turned negative. Um, they were down a little bit more earlier this morning, and now they're starting to come back a little bit. So it's hard to say where we'll be at the open, but it does look like maybe it could be a mixed open. And uh, of course, then we'll go from there. We have been trading below the 20 day EMA the last three days. I'll show you that chart in just a couple of minutes. But, um, you know, I, I suspect that the path of least resistance remains to the downside. But that's something that, uh, you know, continue to monitor as we uh, move along. Looking to, at today's agenda, um, I'm going to start off with the daily market recap, as I always do. Then we'll jump into talking technically. Relative strength, um, earning spotlight, and the three you must see. So uh, before we get into any of that, though, let's go over, take a look at earningsbeats.com. If you're new to earningsbeats, uh, I am the chief market strategist at earningsbeats. Would love to have you come over to our site. Simply scroll down if you haven't already. We have a free newsletter. So you can subscribe to our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. Simply a name and email address. That's all it takes. No credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time, completely free. It's published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. It's a very, very simple read that will come out uh, about an hour before the market opens. Uh, normally, it's just a couple paragraphs and a chart, uh, just highlighting some of the things that we find very important at earnings beats, uh, things like relative strength and earnings and gaps and candlesticks and things like that. So if you're interested, Go over to earningsbeats.com and make sure you scroll down and subscribe to our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. All right, turning our attention to the daily market recap from Monday, February 7th, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished up one point. All that work, all day long, one point, closed at 35,091. S&P 500, not quite as fortunate though, down 17 points. Uh, and you can see there a little bit about that uh, action I was talking about just a couple of minutes ago below that 20 day EMA. The NASDAQ, which on a relative basis continues to perform uh, worse than the Dow and the S&P 500. So this is one of your key underperformers. NASDAQ yesterday down 82, which was down almost six tenths of 1%. Mid caps finished up four, small caps finished up one, but they too on a relative basis have been under a little bit more pressure. The last three here, the NASDAQ, mid caps, and small caps, you can see, looking back the last six months, have all gone below prior support levels. The Dow and the S&P did so on an intraday basis, but they haven't closed beneath those levels. I think it's all coming, but we will continue to monitor it. Monitor it. I'll pass it along here during uh, future Trading Places Live uh, episodes. All right. From a sector perspective, energy up about 1.3% on Monday, financials up 0.3%, and staples up about 0.2%. Those were your three big winners. Communication services, again, taking a big hit to the downside, ready to break down, down one and three quarter percent uh, on Monday. Technology remains under pressure. We've got that neckline right here on technology. If that goes, you're going to want to be careful. I have a feeling that would take the S&P 500 uh, down below that 4,300 neckline. So I think technology, as almost always, holds a big key for the overall market. Watch that uh, 147 area on the XLK. If we lose it, that would not be a good sign for the overall market. All right, moving on to the 10-year Treasury yield. Uh, this morning, there are no economic reports out of any substance. Same went for yesterday. So really, the markets are trading. Well, yesterday, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, earnings news. I had a few companies reporting in the morning before the open. But there really wasn't a whole lot of news. And um, it was interesting to see. We didn't really do a whole lot in terms of the 10-year Treasury yield, just you know, mostly sideways uh, action. Um, but we are threatening a very significant breakout. 
And uh, we are up this morning, even though it's not showing it here on this chart, we are up this morning about three basis points to 1.94%. And I'm going to take you back. Let's look at a five-year weekly chart here, because this right in here is the resistance at about 190. So last, well, actually 2019, the summer, we got down as low as about 140, 145 on the yield. And then we had this final bounce before the pandemic. We got up to 1.97, I think was the high. The high close may have been 1.95, but you can see it right in here. That was right before this steep decline. We've gotten almost all of that back now. And I believe we're going to get it all back probably this week. It might be that we break out. We've got a big um, CPI report coming out on Thursday. You definitely want to make sure you're you know, kind of watching that. Um, I think a lot of what's going on in the market right now has to do with fears and increasing fears over rising inflation. And I think that Thursday report is going to show us that we continue to rise. So uh, you might want to take necessary precautions. Rising inflation uh, historically leads to rising interest rates. That's the Fed's ammo to try to combat inflation. So if rates are going up, you're going to see a lot of folks selling the bonds. Ten-year yield will go up in response to that. And if we get a breakout above 2%, it's going to be the first time we've seen that since July of 2019. So more than two and a half years since we've seen the yield over 2%. That will generate a lot of headlines in the media. So the combination of the inflation threat, the threat of higher interest rates, I think continues to put a lot of selling pressure on growth areas. And that's what's been really hurting the market over the last year. This market would be a lot higher if, if growth stocks were participating. I mean, we've seen other value areas performing pretty well, especially energy. Energy's done extremely well. Uh, financials have been holding their own. Um, so we got some areas, consumer staples, of course, that's a defensive group, but uh, that's been doing very well. So we do have pockets of strength. It's the big uh, growth names, uh, not necessarily the large cap, but some of the bigger mid cap growth names and small cap growth names that have really uh, taken a toll on the market. So we'll watch this. 197 is the big level to keep an eye on this morning. 194, a little over 194. So we're getting close just in time for this Thursday CPI report. Be careful. All right, uh, let's move on to talking technically. So first, let's just look at the S&P 500. Here are the three days I was talking about now, three in a row that we've been trading back beneath the 20-day EMA. So after moving down, breaking below prior lows, looked like we were breaking down below that uh, early October low, right around 4,300. We did on an intraday basis, came back up and held it. That's when the VIX shot up to almost 40. Uh, that marked a short-term bottom. But we had this left shoulder, neckline, head, and as we came back down to this 4,300 level, I think we've marked a neckline with even a slightly lower um, slope, uh, a little lower right side of the neckline, at least on an intraday basis. And so I think, uh, you know, this uh, move back to the upside was an opportunity to exit. Um, I was expecting maybe 4,500 up to the 20-day EMA. And as usual, market, you know, throws you a little curveball. We went up a little bit higher, got up close to 4,600 before turning back down. And we've turned back down pretty good 100 points over the last three days. Uh, I would just be careful. Watch that 20-day EMA. If we keep failing, you can see the last three days, we failed every time we get up there. Right now, that's at 45.23. So today, if the stock market's up 40 points, S&P 500, or roughly 1%, just remember, that's going to be testing that 20-day EMA. So if we get up in there, I mean, it'd be great short term to get a break back up above it. Um, anytime you're above the 20 day EMA, you've got the, at least the opportunity to start an uptrend. When you're below it, you generally are in a downtrend. So that's the short term uh, impact of the 20 day. Now, if we keep going up above and below, if that kind of a pattern starts, then I think we're just sideways consolidating. Um, you can get a lot of false signals. Look at what happened here in November and December. Move down below the 20, back up above the 20, back below, back above, back below, back above. It was all this back and forth action. The technicals weren't telling us anything. And then we get the breakout, which ordinarily I would say, hey, that's great. Problem was we had defensive groups leading that breakout. And that is normally the kiss of death for the stock market. And that's what we've seen. I think that was the last hurrah. 
uh, I've made comments, and I'm, I think that there's a very, very good chance that the highs we saw at the very beginning of January will be the highs of the year. I think that that very well could be the highs of the year. Um, if I'm going to be proven wrong, well, we've got to take it one step at a time. And that first step is getting through that 4,600 level, the 50-day moving average, 4,614. We're going to have to get through both of those levels. But I think in the near term, the battle lines have been drawn. I think that 4,600 level up to the 50-day moving average, that's your resistance to watch. 4,300 is your neckline. I think that is a very, very important to, uh, level to watch. If we break 4,300, I think this measures to 3,800. From 4,800 down to 4,300, there's your 500-point measurement to the neckline, head to the neckline. Break down below the neckline, another 500 points. That takes us to 3,800. All right. Um, another thing I want to talk about here is the equity-only put-call ratio. Notice this is a daily, um, a daily chart showing the closes of the equity-only put-call ratio uh, since back in February 2021. And, you know, what you can see is, well, I think to the, you know, just the eye as you're looking across, see a little ups and downs, but I think since November, I think it's kind of clear that this, the movement, you know, we could almost draw this little channel. We've got a few little outliers outside the channel, but for the most part, the highs are going up, the lows are going up, and you can kind of see maybe a little bit more uh, or a little less bullishness, a little more bearishness creeping into the market. And it started back at the bottom in uh, early November. So this is not something that just started, you know, here in January of 2022. I think this started last year. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The market was growing more cautious. The market was growing more defensive, right? I mean, we're moving, um, you know, into areas like consumer staples and utilities to lead the market's advance at the end of December. Well, we're seeing the same kind of thing in options. Here's the problem though. We are not nearly high enough. You look at this one year chart and you say, wow, well, we've hit some levels that we haven't seen in more than a year. That should be enough, right? Well, I don't think so because we went through two years of bullishness. And so these uh, equity only put call readings that you see here historically are very, very, very low. And if I just stretch this chart out to the last 20 years, I think you can see the, you know, the, just look at the, the body, if you will, the real dark red, you've got these outliers with the, you know, thin lines that go out, but just kind of look at the, the body. It almost looks like a caterpillar or something. Anyway, this body, you can see where it's been over the last 15 years. The body at the beginning of 2021 and throughout much of 2021, you can see was below, I mean, I think by far, over the last 17 years, the most bullish that options traders have been. And I think we need to reset and get that Caterpillar body back up into this, you know, at least 50 to 70 range and maybe even 60 to 80. Possibly, I mean, at the high end, you can kind of see right here. Remember the end of 2015 and early 2016? Looked like we were breaking down, lots of consolidation. The market was sideways for a while and see how we started to move that body up a little bit. And then at the peak, we finally moved it up to a very high level. That's where the market launched from. Where did the market launch from in 2008? When the pessimism was up here, that Caterpillar body was way up high. How about uh, 2004? The market launched off of 2004 through 2007 when we got reset that sentiment up higher. Here, it's higher. Here, it's higher. Every one of those, we followed up with a big move to the upside. We need to get this moving back up into this range, and it's going to take a while. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. Now, another way to look at this is I have the same chart. This is the exact same chart, the CPCE. Go down here, 20 years. So here's the CPCE. Go down here, 20 years. What the heck? What's the difference? Well, what I've done is down here, I've gone in and put in an invisible chart. And so all that data disappears, all of that back and forth daily actions gone. The only thing you're seeing is the overlay, which is a 253 day overlay, which by the way, 253 trading days is a year. So here's the one year moving average of that equity only put call ratio. Do you see our problem? 
look throughout this entire move to the upside, we went straight up and look at what has happened to sentiment. It's turned so bullish, way more bullish. You know, looking back at this chart, you know, you can't, maybe you can't quite tell whether this is more bullish than this. Well, I think from this chart, you can tell it's pretty easy. Um, you know, it's, we're, we're at a, you know, our one year moving average got down below 0.475, down close to 0.45. You know, before, if you looked, 0.45 was like one of the outliers. See how these lines down here, this is 0.45 right here. So mostly 0.45 was just, okay, every once in a while we would hit it. We had got to the point where that was the average for a year. So look at this move back to the upside. See how we're just starting to make this turn to the upside? And with that, you can see the, the selling that's starting to take place. We don't necessarily need a lot of selling, but we need a lot of consolidation. We need for people to realize we're just not going to go back up to all-time highs. So I think we're going to have more selling. I mean, is it possible we just sideways consolidate? Yes, I think that could do the trick. But I just believe the narrative is going to take us lower. And so I think we've got to be on guard here. Uh, when you see this turn to the upside coming off of, you know, the sentiment going more and more bullish for a period of time, this turn, remember I was just talking about 2015, 2016. Remember if we look over here, tw late 2015, Right, oop, right here, late 2015, 2016. You see how that sentiment reset? Look at what happened 2015, 2016 here. So same thing. We're just starting to take the turn in 2014. And then it was in 2015 that we got the reset after we had been moving more and more bearish. And look at the market, what's going on with the market. That's what it takes to get folks more bearish. We have to see more selling. We've been going straight up for two years. This little move down, okay, yeah, that was nice. Nice little pullback, but I think we need more. I think we need something like this. I don't think it's going to be, you know, two years of this. I don't believe that. But I do think we could be in for six, maybe even nine months of this drop, maybe a rally back, another drop. Um, that would not surprise me at all. And I think there's a possibility we could go down sharply like we've done recently in the last few years, but not over a, a two or three year period. I think it will be probably six to nine months. And so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. All right, let's move on. Um, oh, one last thing I want to talk about here, Peloton. Peloton back in the news again today. I mean, this has been uh, kind of crazy. I don't know if there's a lot of manipulation taking place or what. Over the weekend, there's speculation, there's buyers out there, Apple, Amazon, Nike mentioned as three potential buyers, stock gaps up over the 20 day moving average. And then uh, today I see that they've uh, named tech executive Barry McCarthy to replace CEO John Foley. And they've also slashed their full year revenue outlook um, to 3.7 to 3.8 billion. Previously, it was 4.4 to 4.8 billion. Now that, is lowering guidance. And if you don't believe in technical analysis, I want you to look at this chart because we're coming out now, obviously there's been some other bad news lawsuits and, and everything else, but look at the move just over the last two or three months. You know, you thought that gap down maybe was it. Okay, yeah, it's uh, horrible news, got the gap down, pulled back, here we go. We're gonna start turning back up. See that big volume move? Nope, right back down. There's a nice little candle, here we go, right? Nope, right back down. This continued for another few months. And now we've got earnings coming out. We've got warnings. We've got CEOs, you know, being replaced. It's the chart tells us the chart is looking at what's going on. Wall Street goes out, meets with these companies and sees the mess before we see the mess. And the only way to know that there's a mess is by following the technicals. The fundamentals come out too late. All right, uh, moving on to um, <clears throat> the relative strength. Uh, technology, well, just look at the last couple of months. I mean, overall, we still look great. Does this look like it's anything horrible? No, but short term, we've had a move, really strong move in 2021 on a relative basis. And I think we're paying the price. Very similar to 2018, paying the price. Um, you know, after a big move in 2011, 2012, 2013, paid the price. I think we're in the midst of paying the price. Consumer discretionary, already we've been paying the price. 
but we've got a key support level right here, about 0 0.04. Um, if we take out that low from back in uh, the third quarter of last year, I think that draw it brings into play anyway the move we saw back during the pandemic on a relative basis. Now, I don't think we go all the way back down there, but I do think we're probably going to make this break. Um, maybe it's short term and then right back up to the upside. If you look at this break in the pandemic, we actually went below this low temporarily and then came back up. You look at this break here in September, or, uh, well, maybe October 2017. See how we took out these prior, this prior support temporarily and then made the break? Um, that's not unusual. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us break a little bit below that at some point and then rally back. Communication services. I mean, this has really turned bad. This is the worst this group has looked really over the last 14, 15 years, um, all the way back since uh, the beginning of the XLC. So the only other time was maybe in 2018 right here, but uh, this, is, this is really bad. This group's in trouble. Industrials, um, even with rates rising, usually that drives industrials higher. We're turning back down, not looking good. This is four of our five groups right now, by the way, aggressive groups. And you're not hearing me talk too much bullishness about any of these. How about financials? Well, we've seen the S&P 500. We saw the S&P 500 break out in December. This group hasn't broken out on a relative basis, but among the aggressive groups, I would say this one looks the best. And even if we break above the high back in the second quarter of 2021 right here, we still got work to do. It's not like, it's, I think we're going to see a little bit of outperformance by financials. If rates are going up, probably going to see a little bit of outperformance. I'm still a little leery, though, if rates go up because of inflation rather than strengthening economic conditions. I'm not sure that that relative strength is going to be all that. We'll see. Healthcare, watch this support, this relative support level right here. Um, so far, we're holding it. I would hope that we would continue to hold it and bounce off of it, but that's a level I'd be watching. Consumer staples, even though we've been breaking down, I think, in a secular bull market, this is what I would expect. But if we are in a cyclical bear, this is an area where the market will tend to gravitate toward. Look at the relative strength starting in 2014. Remember that 2014, 2015, and the early 2016 problem? Consumer staples was one of your leaders. It's starting again. Uh, so if, I, if I'm right about being in a cyclical bear market, this will be one of your relative leaders. Doesn't mean that they'll go up. The S&P, if it goes down 10%, Maybe consumer staples goes down 5%. It's a, it's a safer place to park your money, but it's not, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you avoid losses. Real estate. Real estate, I would expect to continue this uptrend on a relative basis. This is an area I would expect to do well during an inflationary period. And we did pretty well throughout 2021. 2022 has gotten off to a little bit of a start, but I wouldn't be surprised to see real estate pick things up again. Utilities uh, had been breaking down 15-year uh, relative low, which again, during a secular bull market, this is what I would expect. But we did just move to almost a one-year high recently. And if we continue to be weak in the market, this is a safety net. Uh, so I would expect relative outperformance. Energy, this is your leader. Now, do I think it's going to continue forever? No, I don't. I do think maybe the rest of this quarter, could continue to be pretty strong. We did have a nice relative uh, bottoming head and shoulder pattern, left shoulder, neckline, head, uh, right side of the neckline, right shoulder, almost symmetrical. And now we've come up, we've broken out of that. So maybe we do continue for, maybe, maybe energy remains strong throughout the year. Um, this is a group that I actually think, at least for now, you can continue to make money in. Materials, turning back down and rolling over. You know, you would think if inflation was really going to be bad long term, that this would be uh, doing a little bit better than it's doing right now. It started off 2021 on fire, came back down, and now it's just kind of sitting, going sideways, even rolling back over again. So this is a group I'd be a little careful with. All right, earnings spotlight. Uh, Amgen reported last night. Uh, let me see the stock. Well, they, they beat 436 on the bottom line versus 414. I thought they looked pretty good on the chart. I wasn't expecting a big move in Amazon, Amgen. Still got Amazon on the brain. Uh, Amgen, I wasn't expecting a big move. Um, it is down about 1%. So that would be about $2, so maybe 221. Still down here testing this area of support around the 220 area. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce off of that, though. This is a, in the healthcare area. Healthcare, as I mentioned, close to support on a relative basis. So I'd be looking for maybe a little bit of strength after a, a gap down this morning, if that's what we get. SPG, this one I was a little surprised out. They did beat, by the way, but this was a company I featured, uh, I think, on Monday morning in the uh, Earnings Beats Digest. Um, and this is a company that I was expecting good results from. They did beat 309 versus 288. Uh, but the stock is down, or last time I looked was down about three and a third percent, which would take us down maybe about five bucks, which would be back down to about maybe 143 or so, 144. I wouldn't be surprised. You see a lot of hollow candles right in here. I wouldn't be surprised with this gap down. Even if we, if we get a long tail down to around 140, maybe we bounce off of that. I wouldn't be surprised to see morning weakness followed by strength and maybe even a big breakout on SPG. Look at that AD line. Seems to be some accumulation going on, which makes sense given these uh, hollow candles that I'm seeing. So I think uh, Simon Property Group could be an opportunity. We'll have to kind of uh, see. One other company I wanted to mention here, this is in the semi space. This is a company that had been doing extremely well last quarter. You can see really since August, it bottomed at 25, went to 62 and a half. Huge move, great volume. AD line was going up. It seemed like this was the best thing since sliced bread. And then January hit. So is the January weakness just taking this down like it's taking everything down, you know, baby out with the bathwater kind of a thing? Or is it going down for, for good reason? Well, they came out, they reported earnings last night, a buck 20 versus a buck 05. So they're still, you know, coming through with some good earnings reports. The AD line has remained up near its all time high, even though price action is way below. So this is a report that I was really anxious to, to hear and get. We're looks like we're down a little over 1%. In fact, let me take you real quick to this uh, chart. Uh, whoops, I want to get the actual. Oh, right now we're showing flat on it. Uh, so we'll see whether where it opens. Uh, last time I looked, it was down about one and one third percent. But anything back down to support would be interesting. A breakout above the high a week or so ago would be very uh, bullish, I think, for the stock. All right, let's move on to the three you must see. Going to wrap this up. Um, first up uh, is Coca-Cola. And what I wanted to do, and I, these are three of the Dow components, by the way. I wanted you to look at the AD line. While a lot of areas have been getting hit very, very hard over the last couple of months, the benefit Fisheries have been some of the stocks that didn't perform as well. So Coca-Cola, which had just been going sideways, really wasn't doing much throughout last year. AD line near the 52-week low. All of a sudden, they woke up in December when everything started turning more defensive. Money started finding its way into Coca-Cola. Beautiful move up. I don't really see many hollow, or excuse me, many red-filled candles. Almost everything is hollow. Even when we gap down, we see red hollow candles. So my point being. This stock, I think, is being accumulated. A lot of money rotating into Coca-Cola. One negative short term, and that is right here, negative divergence with higher prices. Be careful. We might get a 50-day test, but I think that would be a buy. Um, next up, WBA, which is Walgreens Boots Alliance. I just wanted to point out, you see how when we got to this top right here, we rolled back over? The only reason I'm mentioning that, I mean, I think clearly we have a sideways consolidating chart here. The reason I mention that, I want you to take a look at American Express, because if we don't get the breakout with American Express, we could be in for something similar. We're right up here testing this 189, 190 area. If we fall back, watch that 20-day moving average, but it could be that we simply go back into a consolidation. Need that breakout, clear breakout above 190 to confirm. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you so much. I'll be back over at earningsbeats.com for your next Trading Places Live. That's at 9 a.m. Eastern on uh, you can go to earningsbeats.com and then uh, just go over here and make sure you, you uh, click on that trading places live after 845 in the morning. You'll be able to come into the room. Hey, everybody have a great day. Happy trading. Hey, guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did. Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.